Tackle Junkies. What's going on, everyone? Really appreciate you guys and gals for clicking on the video. Uh, before we get rolling, big shout out to Carl's for sponsoring today's video. I know a lot of you guys are Biospawn fans, and right now the um, it's, it's Members Week over there, Carl's. And like I said, Biospawn fans, a uh, regular price is $5.69. If you're a member, the member week price is $3.39. So you're getting a pack of Biospawn for $3.39. Uh, 10,000 fish, there's a lot of great brands over there on sale. Definitely check them out. Uh, we talked about the new Guggen Lizard and some of the new Guggen Soft Plastics that uh, would be available soon and they're available now. Again, over there at Carl's, I think those are like 20, maybe 20% off as well. But that's always member price. I don't believe there's anything additional on the Guggen stuff. But like I said, guys, free 30-day trial. You got nothing to lose. Link down below, sign up, free 30-day trial. Make a few purchases, save a few bucks. If you don't like it, cancel. It didn't cost you a dime and you saved a few bucks. So anyways, check them out. Link down below. Big shout out to Carl's for sponsoring today's video. Guys, it is like 60 degrees out right now. Wishing I was fishing. I'm not I'm getting the boat ready. Um, you guys know, normally I head to the ponds for the first couple months. I, I usually don't take the boat out till like April, May, and I'm taking it out first this year. My plan is to get it out next Monday, a week from today. They are calling for snow and rain, of course, but temps are still pretty warm. I think water temps right now are low 40s. Fishing muddy water, it's going to probably at least need to be close to 50 for me to even get, get a bite but I still want to get out there as soon as possible. I am ready. I know you guys are too. So anyways, uh, since we're getting the boat ready today, um, I'm getting everything in the boat that I need to be, or that would make me legal, right? So like the necessity, legal, safety type stuff is what we're going to talk about today. So if you have a boat, um, you're going to need majority of the stuff in your boat. Um, but make sure you check with like where you live and where you're fishing, the types of lakes and all that, because you may need uh, different things based on where you're fishing and what lakes you're fishing. So this is what I need for where I'm fishing around here. So just check out what you may need for your lakes. And I'm sure you guys can tell I'm wearing a mic again. I used to wear this mic all the time, kind of became pain in the butt. Then the GoPros are having an issue with it where half of the time I wouldn't have audio. So hopefully I have audio now or I'm gonna, gonna be pretty hot. But uh, like I said, hopefully the audio is great for you guys. Um, and let's just hop right into it. So I think we got like 10 things. Um, I'm going to show some tools, but we're not going to focus really on tools at all. I'm going to build like a boat toolbox. I'm kind of in the process of that. So we'll do a separate video on that because I kind of think that's a cool topic. But everything else we're just gonna run through here uh, really fast. So the first thing we got here obviously a life jacket okay now i used to wear i used to wear the inflatables like the automatic inflatables but i don't know what it is i'm not a very strong swimmer and like i said i wore those for the longest time yes they're lighter um, they're more comfortable and things like that and half the time you don't even know you have them on but it, i just got to thinking like how do i know this thing's even going to go off when i go in the water and like i said i'm not a very strong swimmer i know you can test them right set them off but every time you do that then you have to replace all that which is like 80 bucks i believe to replace them so there's no way to actually know it's going to work without setting it off and then you got to replace it so anyways long story short i went back to these here um, this one here is very comfortable i actually need to pick another one or two of these up just because my boys have grown out of the ones that i had for them but this is the bass pro shops xbs uh, series life jacket. It's kind of expensive. It's like 80 bucks, but like I said, very comfortable life jacket here. It's got some, you know, reflector, um, you know, tape deal on there. Got a few pockets on there, but a nice life jacket. Of course, it's got the zip and the buckles and all that, but uh, a life jacket. You got to have a life jacket and you need a life jacket for every person that's in the boat. So if you're going to, going to be meeting a buddy at the lake, um, grab an extra one just because to, to be legal, you got to have a jacket for each person on the boat. So I normally actually don't carry them in my boat. I keep a few of them in my truck. Uh, that way, if I'm not on my boat, I'm going to fish with somebody else. I know my life jacket's always with me wherever I go. So like I said, but when I get to the lake, I, obviously I take them out of my truck and put them in, put them on my boat and put them in my boat. Okay. Number two is on the jacket as well. And that is a kill switch cord guys. 
don't forget to attach the cord all right, to your jacket. Obviously, you need it in the kill switch, but make sure you attach it to your jacket and don't be one of those guys that has it on the jacket but forgets to put it on the kill switch. So you gotta have one of these. I keep a spare one of these on the boat as well. You know, if you're driving, whatever the case may be, if you get launched out of the boat, as long as this kill switch cord here is on the switch, when you get ejected, it's going to flip the switch, the motor's going to shut off. So make sure that the kill switch cord here is attached to the kill switch. Like I said, I always keep it here on my coat or my life jacket here. And uh, just make sure it's attached to your life jacket or your pants or wherever. Just make sure it's attached to you and then attached to the kill switch. Okay, number three here is a whistle. And I think it makes sense to keep the whistle in the life jacket, okay? I mean, if you're going to get ejected out of the boat or fall out of the boat or whatever the case may be, you would think it would happen when you're, when you're driving, right? So that's why I keep it in here. That way if I do, you know, get ejected out of the boat, of course I'm wearing my life jacket and my whistle is in my life jacket. So if I'm floating away from the boat or whatever the case may be, I can grab my whistle, start blowing it, and hopefully somebody hears it. If I'm trolling and I fall out of the boat, the last thing I'm gonna be thinking for is, where's my whistle? You know, hopefully when I'm falling out, I can grab the boat and uh, I don't go under and all that, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, for me, it makes sense to keep the whistle in the life jacket. So if I am thrown out of the boat or whatever the case may be, and I'm floating away from the boat or whatever, like I said, I can blow on the whistle and hopefully somebody sees me. And of course, I got a little uh, compass on there as well. I think there's a little um, a match, match stick starter thing on here. Um, anyways, got to have a whistle. In some cases, you may need like an air horn. I've um, got one of these here from uh, Better Boats, a little air horn. So air horn, whistle, something of that nature. Like I said, depending on where you're fishing, you may need both. You may need like a flare gun and things like that. So again, just make sure you check where you're fishing. But for me, I just need a whistle, okay? So that is three. I didn't really talk about it. This is all, and I'm not really going to right now, this is all like my paperwork to be legal. So uh, the license for my trailer, my, um, what did they call that? My registration green card sticker, on the lakes that I fish, I got the permits in here and things like that. So obviously you need to have the fishing license and all the paperwork um, that goes with your boat. So just make sure you always have this with you at all times. So we're not really counting that one, but just make sure you have it. So anyways, that's three. Number four is a throw cushion. All right, throw cushion. And I do believe, I got pulled over a couple times and I do believe they had said that you need the rope actually attached to uh, the throw cushion. So if I do have somebody with me, um, I will make sure I attach the rope to the cushion. I guess if they're not a strong swimmer and you throw them the cushion, but they're still struggling out there, you have no way to get them back. So you need to have a rope attached to it. Um, that, may not, that may not be the case everywhere, but I do believe you have to have a rope attached to the throw cushion here. But yeah, anyways, you got to have a throw cushion. A rope is handy as well, you know, for tying the boat off or whatever the case may be. Um, a rope is, is, is nice. This one I believe is, this is Bass Pro Shops rope. I believe it's a hundred foot. So, okay, so throw cushion number four. Okay, number five, let's just go ahead and go with a paddle. Now, they have, you know, longer wooden paddles. I believe my Crestline here came with a longer wooden paddle. These here, um, I like they're just because they're real compact. The handle slides in there, lock it up. Um, you can put it underneath your seat or wherever. But here's why I'm looking at this. Of course, you can have the wooden paddles and you can have these. You have to have one of these to be legal. But if, you know, I'm stranded, okay, let's say all my batteries are down and I'm floating in the middle of the lake. Do you really think you're going to get in? <laughs> Do you think you're really going to get in to the lake or to the dock um, with one of these? I mean, especially if you got some wind, it's going to be a long day out there. So you need one to be legal, but are they going to be that useful? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. This one, I think it's a little longer. Is it longer? Let's check here. Oh yeah, this one actually is. You know what? That actually ain't too bad. Here, I'm making fun of it. It's longer than I thought it was. Either way, um, with a bit of wind, it's still going to be a lot harder, I think, to get in to the dock, but you have to have one to be legal. So 
Um, yeah, I kind of feel bad about making fun of it now. It's a little longer than I thought. You can see, obviously, I never had to use it. Uh, this one here, this one here, you're, you're pretty much screwed with. Yeah, you're screwed with this one. But um, like I said, to be legal, you still have to have one with you. So like I said, have a, have a paddle or two. Uh, maybe give your buddy, if he's with you, give him the longer one so he can do all the work. But you gotta have, gotta have a paddle either way, if they work or not, you gotta have one to be legal. Like I said, most boats come with, um, with a wooden handle one, but I wanted these just because they're a bit more um, compact and I can fit them under the seat and things like that. So you gotta have a paddle, okay? Gotta have a paddle. I got two, one for each one of my boys. Okay, so that is what, three, four, five. Fire extinguisher for the obvious reasons. Um, it doesn't do, it, do you any good if it's not full, okay? So make sure it's full. If you buy a new boat, uh, I'm sure majority of the time, or probably all the time, it comes with them. This is my original one here. It's still in the green, I'm still full, so I am good to go. But like I said, accidents happen, fires happen. Have a fire extinguisher on the boat. Let's go with uh, first aid kit. Obviously you don't need to have a first aid kit on the boat, but if you get a hook in your finger or you cut your finger, whatever the case may be, you're gonna wish you had one. This one here is from Angler Aid. Now this one is actually called the, uh, the first aid kit. I do believe they have three different sizes of these because I did a video on them. I'll link it down below, definitely check them out. Last year I carried uh, the biggest one and it's actually like a deep version, full 3700 series. It's a big box. And I carried that one, like I said, last season. And this year I went to just the first aid one here. That box was super handy, had a lot of cool things in it. But a lot of the things in it, I also had in other areas of the boat. Like I always keep a flashlight on me, multi-tool, um, that kind of stuff. I have other places in the boat, so I didn't really need a lot of the things um, in that kit. Still an awesome kit. Again, I'll link that video down below. Definitely check it out. But what I felt what I really did need was just a good first aid kit. So there's only like uh, first aid type stuff in here. And you can kind of see everything that really comes in the kit. And some, some things I upgraded, put a little better, um, like a good example would be like the, uh, the sunscreen. I've been using the the Reeler Shield for quite a few years now. Love this stuff, so I took out the sunscreen that came in the kit and put in my Reeler Shield. I added, you know, some cotton swabs and things like that that were in my other kit that I wanted in here as well. Added some uh, Neosporin. Just, there's a little bit of everything in here. If you guys want a video on what I added to this box, I can do that as well. Doubled up on the ibuprofen. Um, and aspirin, things like that. But anyways, I got a nice variety of here of things that um, hopefully I never have to use. Because if I'm in this box, you know, I cut my finger, I got hooked my finger, something went, something went wrong. So hopefully I can just tuck this box away and I never have to get into it. But anyways, I have a nice assortment in here of first aid items to really get me through anything that would happen out on the water. So definitely have yourself a little First aid kit, like I said, everything that came in this kit, I have in here. And then like I said, I did upgrade. I put a better scissors in here. I put a little CUDA scissors in here. And this is the case if I need to cut some braid for the braid trick, if I gotta pull out a, a trouble hook, whatever the case may be. Like I said, I just upgraded a few items in it and added a few extra things. But for the most part, it's, um, it's pretty stock. But um, it's just smaller than the one I was using last year. I can tuck that under my seat or wherever. It doesn't take up a much doesn't take up much space and I got everything that I need in here. Okay, next up we have a spare plug. This here is just like some plug knockers and extra radiator clamps and stainless and things like that. But the main or the most important thing in that little kit there is an extra, an extra plug. So I don't have like the traditional kind that you would put in there. It's got a little metal bar that you, you tighten up and it's all rubber. Mine actually is a, it's a symbol you have to buy here. I wouldn't need this part here but I did buy an extra one in case something did happen to this inner portion here. I can replace this, it's got a new O-ring on there and we'd be good to go. I don't believe you can buy this separate, you have to buy the, the assembly together. So anyways, that's what we did here. And uh, spare plug, definitely gotta have a spare plug. Okay, last up is kinda like a two in one deal. This is the Nautic Start 2 Power Reserve Jump Starter. 
so I can, you know, charge my cameras, charge my phone, uh, jump the outboard, whatever I need to do. This thing here will get it done. Now this one is, is fairly old. I got a video on it, which I'll link down below. I'm not sure if you can still get it, um, but I do have a few of these. I actually gave one to my dad. I keep one on my truck, keep one here in the boat. But like I said, you can charge your cameras, your phone, whatever you need to do, jump your outboard. I've jumped my dad's uh, riding lawnmower with these things. I mean, they're, they're pretty handy to have. But like I said, not sure this particular one is still available. But a little portal power deal there. And it also has a flashlight, which is going to be my last one as well. It's a little flashlight there. You guys can see that. It's got the emergency flasher and all that. I always keep a flashlight in my pocket anyways, but you should always have a flashlight or a headlamp or something like that on you on the boat. But um, yeah, Nautic Star 2 Power Reserve Jump Starter. Now the one I use for work, I'm sure it's a bit overkill, bit overkill for the boat. This one here is from um, NOCO, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but this one here is the GB150. Again, it's a, it's a jumper box flashlight. I mean, this is a killer box here. Pretty expensive. Again, I use this one at work. This one jumps my diesel. Um, like I said, probably a bit overkill to carry on the boat, but this brand here um, is pretty awesome. So definitely recommend this brand here. I also carry this one here, which is pretty cool. It goes on the Yolotech lights. Got one of those right here. Sometimes I film with these and you can go ahead and mount the light to the top there plug it in here and of course it just runs off the boat battery so that's pretty cool as well if you're out late at night or early morning it's just a nice little spotlight sometimes i'll put a little ram mount on my uh my dash there and i'll connect it right there and plug it into my usb port there at the dash which is pretty cool as well if you're coming in when it's kind of dark that way you can kind of see where you're driving anyways guys that should be like probably like a top 10 um, things that you should have in your boat to be legal, to be safe and all that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Guys, it's like February, let me look, I don't really know. Where's my phone? It is February 20th. I'm out, I'm gonna be out in the boat like two months earlier than normal. I am super excited to get out there and shoot some videos for you guys. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to it as well. If you guys are already fishing, let me know down below. If you guys are already catching them, let me know down below. Hopefully this video is out to you guys on Monday. If not, it'll be on Wednesday. If you guys are seeing it on Monday though, I'll be live on Tuesday. Uh, I, th I usually do around eight o'clock Central Standard Time. Just depends when I get off from work. We usually schedule for 8.30, but I usually get home a bit earlier. So anyways, somewhere around eight o'clock, I'm usually live every other Tuesday. So keep a lookout for that as well. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Love you guys. Big shout out to Carl for sponsoring today's video. And we will see you guys on the next one. If you guys like the video, smash that thumbs up.